Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You guys, you guys, guys, guys. This is the biggest day of my life. We just bought ourselves an A86 Corolla. There's a huge story behind this car and I can't wait to tell you guys. All right, before I get into the Corolla, really I gotta thank Rob so, Rob so much from Grid Partners. This would not have been possible without you. The cool thing about this story with Rob is now things have come full circle. And I'll give you the shortened version. I first met Rob at Driver Battles at Chuck Wallow Raceway here in Southern California. Then afterwards, Emily and I flew into LA one day for one of her friend's weddings. We went to Rob's headquarters to shoot his Ford Escort Cosworth. And if you haven't seen that video yet, watch it. Then Rob pings me out of the blue and says, hey man, I'm selling an A86 Corolla. Do you want to buy it? And I told him, hey dude, I have a full stable at our house. We got a chaser. We got a other Corolla. We don't have room for this car. And he goes, fine, fine, fine. But I really want you to own it. Long story short, I flew into California to film driver battles here at beautiful Chuck Waller Raceway. And Rob says to me, hey man, if you're in town, you're buying my Corolla. Turns out he gave us an offer we couldn't refuse and we bought the Corolla. Now, the challenge is, how are we gonna get it home? Before we start driving this thing home, let me tell you a little bit about this car because it's pretty fucking special. First and foremost, it is an SR5 converted GTS, but it's a full conversion. On top of that, it's got ITBs, mega squirt and a totally sorted 4ag not only does it have a totally sorted 4ag but it's got t50 transmission gts rear end it's got watanabe's um, it's got a zanke front end and zanke rear bumper we're going to change that soon but everything works it's got a complete interior all the way down to the back seats, the front seats, the dash, everything. It's got Cusco old school JDM hood. But now that you know a lot about the car, before we get into the journey home, and since we're at a racetrack, let's take it for a few hot laps and see what it sounds like because, oh my God, it's eargasmic. that I got the Corolla and now that Rob hooked us up with it we got to get it home and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive this thing 20 hours all the way from the bottom of California to the top of Washington back to our home it's gonna be a huge adventure we're leaving tonight from Chuckwalla at like 5 22 p.m. and I'm hoping to make it to Central California tonight six hours of driving a couple of fuel stops later I gotta pick up a bag of tools I gotta pick up extra oil and hopefully AAA lets me tow it as far as I can so let's see if this thing makes it home trying to get to Morro Bay tonight. So about six more hours of driving. I got a bunch of stuff in the trunk. Let me show, show you what we got. That way, just we have a backup plan just in case. Another thing that I got is a nifty nifty headlamp just in case. Okay, first stop on the road trip is AutoZone. And we got as many tools as I could think of. We got metric socket and standard socket. I'm sure everything on the Corolla is gonna be all metric. Quick little ratchet set. We got Permatex gasket sealer just in case. We got J JB Weld high heat. We got blue Loctite. We got fuel injector cleaner. We got razor blades. We got a quart of oil. We got uh, extending ratchet, which I could probably actually go return right now. We got a uh, crescent wrench for something bigger than whatever I bought. And then we got a bunch of open-ended wrenches and open, and then a bunch of Allen sets. So we're doing all this 
just to make sure if I need to tighten a bolt, if I need to do anything, I can. This way, uh, we can carry on on the road. I'm going to check everything in the engine bay right now, make sure everything's tight. And then I'm actually going to add one of these every single fuel stop. That way we keep the injectors clean so I don't, I don't get bogged down by like a fucked up fuel filter or fuel injector. Alright, you saw everything we got. Time to pop back in the Corolla, fuel up, add some fuel injector cleaner, and continue on the road. Time for one more stop before we hit the road. This is dinner, and this is to stay awake. I'm not trying to do any Red Bulls or anything like that. I just, my eyes are tired from being at the track all day, so it's clear eyes time. Courtesy of the Mobile Mart. Another plus is 31 bucks for five and a half gallons, about half a tank. Hey, that's not so bad. Let's see if we can do that 15 more times. <laughs> Day two, we actually made it to Morro Bay. There's Morro Rock. And hopefully later today we can head over there. Last night we did 385 miles in the Corolla. And today I gotta work a full day here in Morro Bay, be on Zoom, do meetings, etc. And then I'm gonna try and do 450 miles tonight. I have a hotel in the middle of the Redwood Forest. Hopefully the Corolla makes it there because I'll be arriving around 1231. Last night when I got into the town of Morro Bay, I guess everyone here leaves the hotels and don't check you in so i had to like call an emergency number wake the guy up get checked in so pro tip if you're coming into morrow bay and you arrive after 7 p.m you no one will be at your hotel to check you in so get here earlier sucks but it is what it is but anyway there's the rock i'm gonna grab some lunch real quick take some meetings and then hopefully we can hit the road while there's still some daylight and i'm Really fingers crossed that we can get on the road by 4 p.m., maybe 5 p.m., and head to the next spot. So let's see what the day has in store. All right, I'm all done with my meetings. It's about five o'clock right now. It's pretty late in the day. And we have about seven hours to go before we get to our next stop. It's gonna be deep in the Redwood Forest. Let's get out of Morro Bay. Let's hopefully get there before it's too late so I can get some sleep. Last night I may have gotten like four hours of sleep. Here we go, on to day two. The spooky lighting can only mean one thing, and the car died. We made it all the way to Berkeley, and it looks like the fuel pump went out on the Corolla. It won't idle, and I kind of have to like give it a little bit of gas to keep it going, and then either the fuel pump's out or the fuel filter's clogged, um, because it sounds real tinny, like it just sounds extra like tinny, and I'm thinking either the mix, the fuel mixture's off or something's off. And uh, I can drive it on the highway. It's fine on the highway, but it's just like very, very tinny. Um, but then, you know, when you're decelerating or not on load, the engine sounds just fine. I think it's just the mixture. Luckily, there's an auto zone near Oakland that has not only the fuel pump in stock, but the fuel filter. So... We should be in luck there. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be a fun day. It's only 9.30 now, so luckily I can go to bed, I can get some sleep. Um, I hope this Corolla is safe here. I don't really hear the best, uh, the best stories about Oakland and Berkeley, but uh, I, hope, I hope she's fine. I do have a full day's worth of work tomorrow, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take full advantage of this. I'm gonna go to the lobby 
grab a couple beers and go to bed early and then figure it out in the morning because I can't tinker on this thing in the parking lot. Before I do that, let me show you guys what's going on. If you're a really, really, really huge Corolla nerd, you could probably already tell me what's wrong before I try to figure it out tomorrow. But watch this, I'm gonna start the car and you'll see how it's acting. And so now we'll start it. Started just fine. Shakes big time when idle. Okay. There we go. Look at that, idling at 500. And then. Hear that? So I can't like stab the throttle. And then if I do, it kind of poops out and it's done. Here, let's try and start it again. Here. All right. And so we're, and it died just like that. All right, so it's not happy. It's not happy. You can hear how tinny it is. Listen, just like actual. Nothing's bent or anything because it doesn't make the noise under D cell. But listen, just like extra. I think it's either too rich, too lean, or the timing's off. And so tomorrow we're gonna change the fuel filter, fuel pump, and we'll see if we can solve this problem. Okay, it's day two, being stuck at the hotel. Luckily, AutoZone showed up. It was supposed to be same day delivery, but they just showed up the next day at 8.30, 8.45 in the morning, kinda late. But they drove this to the hotel. Hopefully the fuel filter solves our problem. So we're gonna install this bad boy right now. I brought all my tools down. I actually have two hours before work. So this is actually good stuff. Actually one hour before work. So I actually have enough time to put this on. Hopefully it works and I can get out of here and head home. Just changed the fuel filter. So we're gonna check for leaks. And we're gonna see how the car idles. Okay, that was almost a disaster. I guess the O-rings that came with the thing are not thick enough, so I double stacked the O-rings on the bottom, put a single O-ring on top. Fuel got everywhere, oh my God. So double stack the O-rings on the bottom, single stack O-ring on top, turn on the fuel pump and it seems to be fine. I'm afraid to fire it now. I don't want to start a fire in my engine bay. I don't have anything to put this out. Uh, I mean, I don't even have rags, but I mean, there's just a lot of fuel everywhere. So uh, I'm gonna let it air out for like 10 minutes and then I'll try and start it again. All right, we're back on the road, baby. Did I fix the Corolla in Oakland? No. Am I driving it as is? Yes. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know what to do. I put on the new fuel filter and it was spraying fuel everywhere. And so all I really did was, one, I was tired of being in Oakland for two days. That's ridiculous. And two, I just went through all the lines and just zip tied all the vacuum hoses and put duct tape over all the old hoses hoping that will uh, get rid of a vacuum leak. And the car is running, you can hear it. There's really like no power and it idles kind of rough. So I'm thinking it's definitely vacuum or fuel related, but what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and get to Reading tonight. It's two hours from now. And then uh, I got a fuel pressure regulator hopefully waiting for me at the car parts store there. By the way, I ordered car parts, all these parts, fuel pressure regulator, fuel filter, fuel pump, from every car parts store in Oakland, and every car parts store in Oakland did not fulfill the order. Everyone said, I'm ready in an hour. And we got to the point where I myself Ubered there, and it looked like all the car parts stores got robbed. Oakland is wild, man. Oh, man. Anyway, we're gonna try and get to Reading tonight and throw on the new fuel pressure regulator, and then we're gonna try and go over the Mount Shasta Pass so we can head home. from Oakland to Redding and Emily's gonna meet up with me tonight in Eugene, Oregon. But before we go up and over that pass, the Corolla honestly is not running good. In fifth gear, there's no power. In fourth gear, there's no power. And then on the way here, I finally lost my clutch line. So I'm actually in another parking lot. Here's an O'Reilly. I'm gonna 
change the fuel pressure regulator. I'm going to change the plugs, give a quick tune up, and then I'm gonna see what's up with that clutch line. I don't know if they're gonna have the clutch line here in stock because who knows if they will, but when I pulled the reservoir in the parking lot, it was empty. So there's a small leak going on somewhere. I don't know what's happening. So I'm probably gonna have to pump the pedal myself in this parking lot and then keep topping off the fluid so I don't run out of fluid or don't have air in the system while I'm trying to drive. It's one thing after another. We're gonna see if we can get this sorted. If we can get it sorted, we're back on the road. If we're not on getting it sorted, then I'm gonna stay here tonight and meet up with Emily tomorrow. All right, here's what the old plug looks like. Not bad, not good, kind of just not perfect. And then here's the new plug, so much better. So much better. So hopefully this helps. All right, we got the plugs changed out. I bled the clutch line. I also uh, switched the fuel pressure regulator. So now I'm gonna take it for a rip and see if she drives any better. We're gonna be climbing a big, big hill, a huge elevation gain. And the car doesn't have any power. It's, it's gonna be really, really dangerous up there. It's like 32 degrees tonight. So I'm gonna rip it around the block a few times. There's a gas station right there. Get some gas and then decide whether or not I'm going up that hill. All right, I took it for a rip and it's not good, like it goes, but it's not like, wow, this is fun. It honestly feels like maybe 80, 90 horsepower. This should be like 120 horsepower engine. And it just doesn't sound healthy. However, I've driven it this far and I think I can make it. The wife texted me the address here. Emily says, we are five hours away, 2 a.m., 300 miles. I, I don't think I can make that. We got gas and we're headed over the pass. It's going to be like 31, 32 degrees. The car just does not sound good. It sounds like it's uh, definitely, not, the fuel mixture is horrible on this. I don't know what's going on. It's now day four or five. I forgot what day was. Uh, maybe five, I think. And with that said, uh, I'm not going to drive it home anymore. Emily's here. Uh, I don't want to drive it. I, we got the Sequoia. We got the dogs. We got an Airbnb. And so what we're going to do, we're going to throw the Corolla on a trailer and we're going to drive home together. The Corolla didn't make it all the way from the bottom of California to the top of Washington, but that's okay. Uh, at least we're going to be driving home as a family and we'll get, get to hang out and relax and be a little bit more comfortable. All right, let's go get this Corolla sorted and uh, get it on a trailer and get on out of here. we're two hours from home and and we don't have time to stop for food however highly recommend going to Cowlitz Indian Reservation 
getting fuel at their gigantic gas station that you can pull a car trailer in, and fried chicken. We can't recommend that chicken, but you can recommend that it's edible. <laughs> yeah, okay. We can't recommend the chicken as in it's the most delicious chicken. However, at whatever time of day it is when we've been driving for however how long we've been driving, fried chicken at a gas station, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. Fried chicken time. I filmed the moment it happened, but we hit a deer. And I don't know the damage of the car, I don't know the damage of the bumper. We have a metal steel C4 fabrication front bumper on this car. And there's so many things that could have happened. Like I could have still been driving the Corolla and hit that deer. I could have been driving any other car without the bumper and hit that deer. But we hit the deer, nothing happened to us on the road. Um, the headlights still work, car still works, the grill's not bad. Uh, but, we'll, but we'll see how bad it is when we get into our driveway and, and show you guys it once we get home. But it's time to look at the damage. And we hit it with our C4 Fab front bumper. And if you're going to buy a front bumper, buy a C4 Fab because honestly we hit a deer at 70 miles an hour and the only thing that happened was the bumper shifted underneath the bumper cap there. No damage at all to the bumper. However, the deer spun around and its head hit our door, taking paint off. It's all hair and snot and whatever. And then down to the slider, there's blood. What do they say? Good things don't come easy and easy things don't come good. And we're home, we're safe. This is a dream car. My God, it's time to finally relax, have some beers with the wife and just take a load off because what a journey that was. All right, I added some pressure to the cylinder. And so if you crank on it, you should hear if the intake valve is open, which it is now. Oh, that should close. I'm at 30 PSI and the cylinder is not holding any pressure. So this is a very bad sign for cylinder two. In fact, look at that. 60 PSI and 10 PSI pressure in the cylinder. We have a very bad cylinder here. 